The British have gotten themselves into a sticky wicket. As a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, an expert on manufacturing, it's unlikely I would start a manufacturing business in Britain, especially if my product required supplier import from the EU. In America, we have Donald Trump. In Britain, you have Boris Johnson. Both of these leaders have mismanaged their country's COVID-19 responses. Let's start with a discussion of areas negatively impacted by Brexit. Manufacturers are constantly trying to become more efficient. They do that by removing fat or waste from their processes. One efficiency gain is in the relationship between suppliers and manufacturers, what's called just in time. The concept is that a supply shows up just when it's needed. This requires an efficient supply chain, which is not possible with Brexit. Two years ago, if I desired to fly to France from the U.S., I would either land in London or Frankfurt. Now my preference would be to land in Frankfurt because then I would only have to transit one customs border. The trade barriers within the EU are seamless. If my business is to provide finance for major corporations seamlessly, I would go to the largest seamless market, which is the EU. I would not try to service EU businesses from outside the trading bloc. Financial performance of a country is measured by GDP. GDP is interesting because a country wants to maintain the highest GDP independent of other countries. Britain has made a strategic mistake in how it addressed COVID-19, and it has negatively impacted GDP. When Lean Six Sigma looks at areas of inefficiency, one area specifically called out is transportation. When you transport a supply, you have an inventory that is incurring a cost while providing no value to a customer. Inventory is a measurement of inefficiency and should be used strategically. Sometimes the cost is just inventory, sometimes it is food, and sometimes it is medicine. Adding excess transportation time to perishable items adds a significant cost that will be borne by a customer or business. When one is embarking in a new direction, one should do their best to anticipate unanticipated problems. There are so many services provided by the EU that no one person could really understand all of them. Britain will now know all of them because you need to attempt to replicate all of them. Let's start with a discussion on manufacturing. This is best described with an example. Let's look at the case of Nissan. Nissan is a manufacturer and integrator. They manufacture what is strategically important and purchase the rest from suppliers. They put it all together into a car. It is not a car until it is all assembled, even the cigarette lighter. Toyota uses operational excellence as a competitive advantage. One example of this is that they hold in their factory two hours of inventory from their suppliers. Jim Ratcliffe is moving his automotive group out of Britain to France, enabling him to sell to the EU market and build his new cars more efficiently at lower costs. Back to Nissan in Britain. When supplies are taking an indeterminate amount of time to show up, Nissan is going to have to buy a warehouse. Since they don't know if a supply will take three days or five days or seven days to show up, they will need to keep a seven-day stock of inventory of every imported car part. And that means an inventory of everything including cigarette lighters. For Nissan, who competes against Toyota and other manufacturers, this will add significant extra cost to every car they manufacture. Nissan needs to decide whether to suffer the death of a thousand cuts or move their manufacturing capability to the EU. Governments have a fiduciary responsibility to their citizens to deliver their service efficiently and facilitate their businesses' efficiencies. We have talked about the inefficiency Brexit delivers to suppliers and manufacturers. Now let's talk about citizens. If I'm the CEO of an international company and I want to have an international meeting, I'm going to select a place that is interesting, such as Britain, and that is close to other places that are interesting, such as in the EU. Would I be more likely to hold my meeting in Britain or the EU? How come Jacob Rees Moog moved his financial dealings to EU Ireland? Is Amsterdam the new London? English is spoken in Amsterdam, and it has been the center of finance for centuries. Its international focus creates a welcome environment for foreigners. Because of COVID-19, the following GDP numbers may not be accurate. Consider them an estimate of the EU GDP, which is about $13.5 trillion, and Britain, which is about $2.4 trillion. If you're going to optimize your financial service delivery, and you had to choose between the two markets, wouldn't you focus on the larger EU? Both America and Britain followed a business-first, health-second policy for COVID-19. It's hard for me to understand, but my best guess is that they were counting on herd immunity without a vaccine. If they had discussed this with scientists, they would have found that you need about 60% infection rate for herd immunity. So if your current infection rate is 5%, you need to infect about 12 times more people. If you currently have a 2% infection rate, then you need about 30 times more infected people. Who could possibly think that this was a good idea? This graph is of G7 countries. Paradoxically, the two countries that put the economy above health suffered the greatest impact of their economies. Apparently, the world is more complicated than some of our leaders knew. 
There are always unanticipated problems, and there will be some around transportation also. But there are some problems that are easy to anticipate. Products that spoil over time would be one of those categories. Play a game with your children and see if you can find any other categories that will be significantly impacted. The impact of duplicating services is significant, minimally beneficial, and costly. There are a huge number of services that were provided by the EU that are now solely the responsibility of the British government. Each new British service will go through these steps. Before you start any service that you have never operated before, it needs to be researched. The next step is to design the service. That includes all the processes. All process needs must be anticipated in advance by people that have never done this before. Next, you'll need to allocate the physical space, build the IT infrastructure, write or buy the applications, staff up as best you can on trainers, and start training people to execute the different processes. Since there is nothing fast about building processes from scratch, there will be costs associated with either doing things manually or not at all. It is unlikely that all the processes for this service will be designed perfectly by novices right off the bat. Therefore, there will be a period of time when the processes fail or not meet customer expectation. There will be an unanticipated cost resulting from these failures. The whole Brexit argument was false. Your Donald Trump promoted the idea that the Brexit cost was higher than it was because he ignored significant rebates. However, how do you know what is too expensive? You need to get an accountant that can calculate all the benefits and compare that to all the costs. That's what needs to be done to enable an intelligent decision. It's easy to demonize immigrants that no country can operate without. Immigrants coming to the U.S. seem to be a lagging indicator of growth. When we are growing, immigrants start arriving. I think that's a pretty good control on immigration. If I have a manufacturing business that aggregates supplies from other businesses in Britain, and I only want to sell my product in Britain, then the inefficiencies of Brexit will not apply to my business. Brexit applies to every British manufacturing company, along with those companies that are leaving Britain right now. With the size of the British market versus the EU market and the inefficiencies Britain is adding, I only see Britain becoming a less beneficial country to operate a business in. Once manufacturing business that have moved from Britain to the EU get set up, staffed, and operating, then it will be very hard to get them back. Greatness requires running on all cylinders. I feel that the British have shot themselves in the foot and it may not be possible to recover from that injury. The only good news is that though the injury will start off obvious, it would degrade slowly after that. I am Jim Fitzgerald, a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and an expert on building your Toyota production system. I'm an expert on innovation and making companies much more efficient. This last presentation shows you how you can build your production system like Toyota.